Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending today's webinar. Uh, we will be joining, we'll be starting shortly. Just want to allow a few more individuals to sign in. Thank you again for attending today's webinar. Good morning again for those individuals who have uh, just signed in. We're going to give it a couple more minutes to uh, allow everybody to sign in and get ready for today's webinar. I'd like to say thank you. Um, we'll be short starting soon. Okay, why don't we go ahead and get started. Um, thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. Uh, my name is Brandon Garner. I am the sales manager here at Superior Trucking Payroll Service. Today's webinar is going to be looking at the executive orders for, uh, from the president and what those are going to mean to your taxes and Social Security. A few housekeeping notes. All your lines have been muted. Um, as we go through the webinar, should you have a question, please feel free to put it in the questions box shown here. Um, at the end of the webinar, we'll have a Q&A section in which we'll go through those questions. Now, we may not get to everyone's question um, based on the complexity, specificity, and you know just the number of questions that we get. However, um, we will send an email, out, email response to each one of you that asks a question. Um, and then if you need to move the slide, click on the double arrow or the orange arrow. However, do not click on the black X because that will exit you from the webinar. Uh, a few things, just quick note about Superior Trucking Payroll Service. We are a full service payroll administrator that is exclusively for the trucking industry. Our services are designed to meet your trucking needs. Uh, what does that mean? That means we will customize our payroll module to meet your specific payroll needs. So whether you're paying by the hour, by the miles, by percentage of load, however you have an arrangement with your drivers, we will make that work. Uh, we are a square peg for a square hole. We will make sure that we customize to your needs. And for those individuals who are currently doing in-house but would like to outsource, however, are reluctant to do so because of past problems, you know, let us know. Reach out to us. Let us know what those situations were, and then we can address those and make sure that they don't happen again for you with our service. Uh, quick notes about um, our speaker today. Uh, our speaker is Mike Ritima. He is the founder of Superior Trucking Payroll Service. Ten years of payroll experience, 
I'm sorry, 20 years of payroll experience, 10 years of trucking finance experience. He was the CFO for a large trucking company here in Grand Rapids, and he's a member of many transportation associations. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Mike. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, welcome, everybody who's here. We're so glad that you're able to participate in this webinar. Uh, we have a few quick housekeeping notes that I put in with all the COVID stuff. This is a pretty stock slide for us now. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a banker, I'm not a lender, I'm not a doctor. And in the case of this one, I'm not a constitutional, uh, you know, I don't have a degree in constitutional studies or something. Uh, so this is just me as a trucking administrator and someone who deals with tax things, telling you what I think is going to happen. Uh, we are focusing on the changes on the executive order and what that could mean. We're not focusing on the politics of whether or not we like the president or in Michigan, we have a democratic governor, whether or not we like the governor. That's not what we're about today. We're about how are we going to deal with this thing? Uh, we are also assuming that the executive order is going to be enacted exactly as it stands right now, that there's not going to be any changes um, and that there's not going to be a compromise between the House, like the Democrats and Republicans about how to fix whatever, as this was supposed to be part of a COVID relief package is my understanding. So we're assuming that doesn't happen at this point. Everybody's pretty dug in. And just a reminder, we do these webinars because we want to help trucking families. Those are the owners, those are the office people, those are the drivers. All of their families get impacted by all this crazy stuff. And that's why we do these webinars is to try and help make this just a little bit easier. So here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to cover what is the executive order that we're talking about. And we're going to talk about how it affects us and how it affects our drivers specifically. I mean, it affects the office people, the W-2 office people and all those people too in the shop and whatnot. But the drivers are the remote people that are probably gonna be, need more help understanding it. And so not because they can't do it, but because they're in a truck all day. Um, so they can't really Google stuff while they're driving, please. Hopefully they don't, unless they're in the passenger seat. Um, and then how does this deferral, which is what the executive order is, how does that get repaid? And then to me, the most important part, which is how do we help our employees get managed through this? Uh, is this is going to be a change and there could be some bumps in the road? And finally, a QA. and uh, You can type in your questions anytime. Brandon probably already told you this in the question box. Type them in anytime. And as long as they're kind of trucking and kind of payroll related, even if they're not about this webinar directly, if you've got a different question, if this reminds you of something else or because we're talking about COVID, you're like, oh, my PPP loan. I got a question about that. Question away. We wanna, we're want we here to help trucking families, and so that doesn't limit it to just what we're talking about right now. Let's start with the executive order. There were four executive orders about a week and a half ago signed on the weekend by the president. There was one about student loan deferral. There was one about unemployment. There was one about eviction. And then there was this one about social security tax deferral. This is the one we're really gonna talk about. The other three, they're important, but they're not trucking and payroll. So we're not really gonna deal with those. Um, I cut and pasted a little piece of it right from the link that I gave you from the White House. So I'm kind of bringing it right from them. There's no editorializing in between. Um, and I cut out the part that matters. The Secretary of Treasury is gonna develop a deferral program and has to do it quickly. Uh, <laughs> so it's one of those things, it's kind of like the COVID relief package, like the, the CARES Act, that it was 800 and some pages, and then the SBA had to figure out how to get you the PPP loan, and I think this is going to be a similar thing. This happens in government all the time, regardless of who is in charge. Um, and so he's, they're, 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 the Secretary of the Treasury is now directed to figure out a way to defer the tax and how we're going to do it. We are making some assumptions here because the Secretary of the Treasury has not yet given any guidance. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be court challenges or whatever or possible compromises, but I'm sure, and I'm also sure that they're working on it because they have to, the president ordered them to do it. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna make some assumptions on reasonable ways this could all happen. Um, every answer that I'm gonna give you, everything I'm telling you is to my best knowledge and as far as I know, but none of it's set yet, so. Just keep that in mind. Um, 
this is the meat of it, how, the executive order, how it would affect our drivers and our employees. The Social Security tax that comes out of the W-2 people's paychecks from September 1st to the end of the year doesn't get collected. It stays in the employee's paycheck. Uh, Social Security is part of FICA. It's 6.2% of the first about $135,000 in wages. Um, so it that would go right into the employee's paycheck, which gives them more net pay, obviously, increases it by 6.2% of their wage. Um, as a really quick, easy math example, if someone has a taxable wage of $1,000 a week, and that's after Section 125 and after per diem, which, by the way, if you're not paying per diem to your over-the-road drivers, you really need to do that, and you need to put a question in the question box today to ask us about it. Uh, we've got resources for you for that, and we'd love to help you. You'll save money, your company will save money, and the driver will save money. So that's the very, very short story of that. Uh, and so if someone making 1000 a week gets a $62 a week boost in their net pay, which is significant. Uh, this is only for people that earn less than four. It's as it's written is four thousand every two weeks, but then also for different pay periods. So it's less than two thousand a week. If you make less than two grand a week, you don't you wouldn't have your social security tax collected. And it's only the employee side. It is not the employer side. Uh, employers still have to pay the matching six point two percent. It's not completely dissimilar in a sense to. I don't know how many years ago it was now, 10, 12 years ago, when we had social security tax for the employee lowered from 6.2% to 4.2, uh, as far as the paycheck calculation goes, where the employer part is still the same as it was. Um, there are other differences and we're gonna talk about those, but uh, really the employer side doesn't change at all. Uh, so now I've got an example for you. I crossed out some things to protect the innocent. This is the, this is, uh, sample pay stub that we use and so the blue stuff I just crossed out because that doesn't matter for this uh, what I highlighted in yellow that you can see is the FICA tax uh, that's Social Security and Medicare and so for this particular driver with a gross pay of well taxable gross pay of 9 14 60 they have a little bit of section 125 that's not subject to Social Security they would get Instead of paying $69.97 in FICA, they're only going to pay the Medicare, which is $13.26. So that's going to add $56.71 to their net pay, which is significant to them, I'm sure. Um, and if it's not significant to you, you can, I'm sure, find someone else who will take it from you. Uh, but yeah, that just gives you an idea of what's going to change for them. And so... Yeah, it's it can be significant. Again, it doesn't take long. You know, fifty bucks. Oh, fifty bucks a week is fifty bucks a week. That's no one, no one, none of us are turning that down. Um, but this is a deferral, as it says in the executive order. It's a deferral. There's possibility of making it permanent. Um, the president has said that if he gets reelected, he's going to work to do that. Um, and again, without without picking sides in the in the presidential election. Uh, getting that done by the end of the year would be, I think, pretty tricky by the end of this year. It, I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just not planning on it being done. So right now, I'm ass we're assuming that the deferral is going to have to be repaid. Um, and as I point out on the slide, there's no, there's nothing from Treasury yet about this, which is fair. I mean, they're shaking up the snow globe pretty good there, and Treasury is going to have to do their best to, to make that work out. Uh, the only way I see this money getting repaid is through the employee's tax return. Um, typically, when you get if you get if you use TurboTax or you get your taxes done somewhere, uh, you give them the W-2. They enter all the numbers on your W-2. They don't just enter your your wage and your your uh, federal income tax withheld uh, box. What's it? You know, box, boxes one through six are your are your wait your taxable wage is box one. Box three is your Social Security wage. Box five is your Medicare wage, and then two, four, and six are the taxes that go with that. I think they're going to make it. They're going to make us true it up there. And so, if you if you made a thousand dollars a week, and there's 18 payrolls, if you pay on Friday, there's going to be 17 Fridays. But then January 1st is a Friday, so you'll probably pay the day before, which means 18 payrolls between September 1 and December 31. And so, if they if there's no Social Security tax taken out and they have to pay it back. On $1,000 in wage, they're going to owe $1,116, which is 
which is the the 111.6 percent of one week's gross. So they're gonna, and that's probably gonna come out of their refund. What I expect to see happen is you're gonna do your taxes kind of like normal, and there's gonna be another hidden line in there for uh that's gonna go to a schedule or a worksheet that's gonna say, okay, you should have paid this much in Social Security, but you only paid this much, so you owe back the difference. Uh, and then we're gonna either take that out of your refund or we're gonna tack that on to what you owe or switch it from a small refund to us to an amount due or something like that. That's gonna stink. No one wants to owe that stuff in January or February, March or April. Um, so just, yeah, that I think that's gonna be a big deal. But, um, and we're gonna talk about how to handle it. This is the part that I really wanna talk about with the drivers of how to handle these things. Uh, I don't see how the employer could be held liable uh, this was a question I actually got from a client of ours. He called me last week and he asked if, well, he's like, well, if I got to pay it back, you know, I'm withholding it. I'm like, well, you can't withhold it. And I don't see how you could pay it back because let's say the driver quits December 1st. So you've done three months worth of this deferral. The IRS can't come to you and say, well, you owe us that money. Uh, they have to they have to get it back. It's going to have to be done on an employee by employee basis, which is why I believe that it's going to be done through the 1040. If, you know, if things, again, if things, if the executive order runs as, as seen right now. Um, but yeah, I don't see how you could make the employer liable. I, I just don't, I just don't get it. So that brings us to the next part here. How do we help our drivers understand this? And I use drivers, it applies to office people in shop too but the drivers are the ones that I think are gonna be the most likely to be impacted negatively if they, uh, you know, they're the most likely to do, to not be as involved in this. So they'll just be like, oh, I got more money in my paycheck, good for me. Um, and I don't wanna paint with a broad brush, but historically drivers are not the greatest managers of money, which is why all of you pay weekly. It's also why they all get, a lot of them get advances and things like that. Um, and so I would hate to have to, you know, Tell the driver at the end of the year, hey, you're going to owe 1,100 bucks on your taxes more than you would have. That turns you into the bad guy, like you did something wrong when there's you didn't do anything wrong. And so, yeah, I want to avoid an unhappy tax time for your drivers. Um, and so, the employee can. What I would suggest that the employee does if they don't want to have to owe this money. I mean, I'd point out to them that you may owe this Monday money, and they're adults; they can make their own decisions. But if they're like, I don't want to owe any money, uh, then I would suggest they complete a new W-4 to have extra money taken out because there's a box right on there where you can have additional withholding. And I would just make that their average their average Social Security tax for, you know, that they expect to have withheld. If a driver normally grosses $1,000, I'd have them put 62 bucks a week in there. Um, but it's tricky, I'm telling you this stuff, but it's tricky because you can't really give that advice to your employees. You don't wanna give tax advice unless you're a tax preparer or somebody who's, you know, who does these things, otherwise they're gonna blame you. Um, I've also I've also listed a link here for, uh, we did, a, we did a, the W-4 is all changed. If you hadn't filled one out this year, it's completely different. And so they actually modernized it. Uh, and I understand what they're doing, but it's a little more complicated to fill out. You're not just married in three anymore. The three went away. Uh, so I've got the link here uh, that you can click on to watch the webinar on how to fill out the new W-4. Uh, and you can reach out to us with questions as well. You're all going to get copies of the slides, by the way. That's I'm sure that's going to be a question. Uh, so these links, you have to try and write down the silly little YouTube watch question mark V equals blah, blah, blah. Don't mess with that. We're going to email this to you. It's also on our website at truckingpayroll.com slash tips, which we'll also email that website to you as well. Our whole YouTube library is there anytime for anybody. Um, but now how are we going to talk to the drivers about this? We got to tell them, well, we don't have to, but we want it, We care about our drivers and we don't want them stuck a thousand dollars or so at the end of the year. Assu again, we're assuming that it gets deferred and does not get waived or abated. Well, we made you a letter. This is a letter. It's it's written as non-politically as I could write it. Um, this is the guts of the letter here. Um, and we talk about this is a deferral, not a reduction in tax. It's not an abatement. Uh, you may end up owing this. 
And then we say, if you don't want to owe, here's a link to a W-4. Here's a link to the help for the W-4 from the IRS, which is a really good help. That tool, that with tax withholding estimator that you see in the link towards the bottom of the page is really helpful for the new W-4. So they can go through all that stuff. Uh, I put in there that you guys can't give tax advice. I say that for you. We can send it to you as a Word document. And you can delete that line. I don't really care. Uh, I just don't. You can get yourself in trouble giving tax advice if you shouldn't. It's why sometimes when you sometimes people will call us and say, what should I do? And we always tell you to ask your tax advisor because they're the ones who know your whole story. And as an office person, we might think we know their story, but we don't. And so, but I think this letter at least gets you out in front of it. And it, uh, it helps, you know, hey, look, this is coming. If you don't want it, uh, we got to change your W-4. And that's really the only way we can do it. Um, so again, and something too, uh, Brandon will be happy to send this out to all of you. Um, and we'll send it to you as a Word document or a PDF. We'll probably, we might even send it as both. I'm not quite sure, but uh, the Word document will be editable. So you can take out, if you want to give tax advice, I guess I'm not going to stop you. So you can take that out if you want, or if you want to refer them to somebody or whatever, that's fine. Um, but yeah, we want, you know, we want to let them know this way too. It kind of gives you a little bit of cover when the driver's upset because they owe at the end of the year or when they do their taxes, they thought they were going to, or they thought they were going to get this big refund that pays for their vacation or pays off their credit card bills. And it's much smaller than that. You can say, look, we tried to warn you. Um, one of the things I would do with this letter too is I'm going to, if you pay on Fridays, if you pay every Friday, the first paycheck that would be impacted by this would be September 4. Uh, what I would do is about August 26, I would be sending this letter out to everybody because you're going to need to give them time to get the W-4s done. And that's going to take a couple hours. It could take a couple hours if they don't understand what's going on. And then they need to get it to you. And then you need to, if you're one of our clients, you need to get it to us. Or, you know, if you're doing it in whatever, it's got to be changed in your payroll system. And, uh, I, yeah, I, I would make sure they have time to get that done because you're probably going to process payroll on the 2nd for the 4th. So, you, you know, they got to get into you by September 2. At the same time, if they miss the first week, you just tweak the math a little bit and start on the 11th. You know, it's not the end of the world if they miss a week. At the same time, you know, if they're going to be all upset that they, you know, they got the bigger check one week and smaller the next week. Just want to get out in front of it with them. That's really my advice uh, on that and just communicate with them. Uh, if you're clients of ours, by the way, we can send this letter out to your employees for you. If we have email addresses, we can email it to everybody. Uh, you just got to tell us when you want it to go and we can take care of that for you. Um, if we don't have your email addresses, obviously that's going to be a problem. But that's that's really the main thing in the webinar. I think this letter could be really helpful uh, to get out in front of your employees' issues and they'll see that you care about them. It's only going to help your retention, your driver retention, and we all have driver retention problems and we all have driver recruiting problems. So, you know, let's let's not have a driver be mad at us when we could have done something about it to try and help them. Even if they ignore it completely, at least then we told them. Uh, here's some useful links that we have for you. These are in addition to the ones that were in uh, the in this in the slide deck already. Uh, we've got some, these all are, have links to different things. The PPP loan one, the third one down, walks through a, a forgiveness schedule as it was written a few months ago. We still haven't seen final guidance, by the way, from the SBA on PPP loans, which is crazy to me, but there's nothing I can do about that. It's just government work. So that's why your bank hasn't probably been bugging you about it yet either. Uh, but you had 24 weeks minimum, so you're still within the window for a while yet. I expect to see some guidance fairly soon. There's also quite honestly a possibility that should an agreement be reached for another COVID relief package um, that would tr that would nullify this, they might put there, I've been hearing talk that they might put something in that loans less than $150,000 get automatically forgiven. In which case you don't have to do anything if you've got, if your loan is smaller than that. Uh, so that'll take care of, that'll take care of, I think, what they say like 80% of the loans or something like that. So, Something else to think about too there. Um, and like I said, other coronavirus COVID links that we have that we like. Um, if you've got other ones, send them to me, by the way. I'd love to add them.
Uh, it's question time. Uh, there's some links at the bottom here. Uh, if you don't mind, those this is, we're happy to do these webinars to help trucking people. We're happy to do them for free. But that bottom link with a YouTube channel, I need to get 100 subscribers, then I can make that website address look non-horrible. Uh, so if you don't mind going subscribe to our YouTube channel, our webinars are there, our one-minute trucking tips are there. You don't have to do anything else. I mean, you can you can follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn. We'd love that too. But the YouTube one is really the one that's the most important to me. And that truckingpayroll.com slash tips is really nice. We put a lot of our webinars in there. All Everything's there. It really goes to the YouTube channel, kind of a, a way to get in there. Um, we, we put all kinds of things we can think of to help people there. And we really recommend that people take a look at that. So it, it looks like we've got some questions, which is awesome. Uh, Brandon, yes. what, you got any queued up for me? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, a lot of them are basically the same question. Okay. <laughs> uh, so really, um, how about I do this? I'll start at this. The, the first one is a very generic. Do we have to do this? What, do we have to do this? I'm assuming means defer the Social Security tax, and yes, you do. That's again, as it's written so far, there's no opting out. Um, okay. uh, that's you know, I get why people want to opt out. I to it totally makes sense to me because you don't want to pay it back later, and that would just be a lot easier. At the same time, it would get really tricky keeping track of who opts in and who opts out, or if somebody opts out and then they go, you know what? it's November and I need money for Christmas presents, I'm going to opt in. And so you've got back and forth and all that. So for, for simplicity's sake, I, it totally makes sense to me that, that you wouldn't, that there's no opting in and out. The people that, if you make more than two grand a week, you're automatically opted out. So uh, it's just the people that make less than $104,000 a year and they're going to be opted in as it's written now. Okay. And so that kind of leads to the next question is says that since this is technically a deferment, um, can we have the option of opting out? And as you mentioned, no, that is not an option. Unless no, you're unfortunately, under 2K. right. That's correct. Okay. Uh, can can an employee opt out? Can an employee make that decision? No. What they would have to do is fill out the new W-4 uh, to have the additional money withheld from their check. And I know it's a little tricky because most of us that are in the webinar, I'm projecting onto you that you. Uh, you, your pay is about the same every pay period. It might vary a little bit here and there if you're hourly, and but most of us are pretty much the same. So like we could fill out this new W-4 and know exactly what number to put in there. Uh, for truck drivers, obviously it's different because it depends on the routes they run that week or the mile, if you're paying by the mile, how many miles they went and so on and so on. So it's not as static, but I would just average it out. You know, you've got 35, what, yeah, about 35 payrolls go by the end of August this year. You know, you can you can get them a number, or even just do the first half of the year and divide by 26 for their Social Security tax, and you can get a number. Uh, but yeah, you can, unfortunately, the employee cannot opt out. Okay. Um, will this be an automatic? Will this be automatic for all employees under the 2K per week versus by choice uh, of the company or the employee? It sounds like yes. It is going to be automatic. We are going. We are start. We are already preparing for the programming changes we've got to make on our side to make this happen. Um, it's not something that we've dealt with before because when they lowered the Social Security tax, was it? I want to say 12 years ago. About um, it was everybody, and this one's not everybody. So we're going to have to make some changes on our side, but that's okay. That's why we're. That's what we do, right? Uh, so why that's like complaining about the weather. So um, yeah, we're going to make that happen, but it's going to be automatic for all employees that under the 2K. Uh, I do think the way I understand it now, and I think this could happen with a driver is, or if you have an employee that gets a bonus um, that puts them over the 2K in the week, uh, it would only it's a paycheck by paycheck look at at it. So if you made $1,800 one week, you would have it deferred. If you made 2,500 the next week because you got a bonus, then you'd end up paying social security tax, which I know seems clunky and I agree, but it's really, they did, that's, they, they, that they designed it as $4,000 every two weeks, not, they didn't prorate annually. They didn't say if you make more than 104,000 in the year, they said, for, you know, they did it on a paycheck by paycheck basis. And so that's the way that we're going to approach it as well. 
Um, now, you had mentioned during the webinar that you were looking, you know, if there was a question in regards to PPP loan, yeah. um, or would you want to take one of those? Absolutely. We want to help okay. people. Yes. Uh, with In regards to the PPP loan forgiveness, what do you suggest for the calculation of hours worked for drivers paid a percentage of the load in regards to FTE calculations? That is an awesome question. Uh, if you do 401k, you have this problem with that too, because they'll require a certain number of hours to be vested. So it's very, to me, it's very similar to that. What we have advised <clears throat> our clients and anyone who else want, who wants to listen to do is, if it's a full-time driver and they drove that week, I count them as 40 hours in a full FTE. And the reason that I do that is most drivers work more than 40 hours. So if you've got a full-time driver and you're looking at the eight-week period, I'll make it the short period. You're looking at the eight-week period, so you're looking for 320 hours from a driver. If they drove all eight of those weeks and you paid them all eight of those weeks, I'm almost every one of them, if not every one of them, are going to have hours in excess of 320 because they're going to have 60 some week. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I would say just to do it as hours or just as 40 hours whatever, whenever they work. We've done this for our clients for their 401k audits. It's never come up. It's never been an issue um, because trucking, it's one of those things that makes trucking special. It makes it different than other, other industries. And part of actually why we got into the business was because this is something that, does, you know, your dentist office isn't going to have this issue. And so we want to, uh, we, you know, we, we, we just do it as 40 hours and we give them the total everybody's fine. Um, I've never seen an issue come up with it. And if you look at it too, if you look at their pay over the eight weeks, you're going to see that you paid them a full-time wage almost every time. So hopefully that answers your question. If it doesn't, or if you have a follow-up to it, reach out. Our, our email addresses and phone numbers are right on the screen right now. We're going to send you these slides. Reach out to me or reach out to Brandon, and we're happy to try and work you through this um it's a big deal it's an unexpected roadblock none of us thought we were going to deal with a year ago <laughs> so you know if we can all put our heads together we can get through this um do we have it i see we have yeah i see it i was looking at the question list now I, I got it pulled up here and i see yeah do we have to do this yeah they're all a lot of them are can we opt out yeah um, yep. oh the, there, there's one more about an independent contractor self-employment tax this is not for, this is just for W-2 employees. The independent contractor stuff would get trued up at the end of the year. I will say that in the event that the, the employee side of Social Security were to be permanently discontinued, or in other words, gone away, then there would be an adjustment on their on their Schedule SE on their on their 1040, which is where you pay this tax. So I would, if I were advising someone who was self-employed about this, I would tell them it doesn't affect them because they 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 don't pay it. They pay it through estimated taxes, hopefully through the year. But um, if they're if they're not getting a W-2 from anybody, then this this all gets trued up at the end of the year anyway, so it's not going to affect them. Um, anybody else? You got any more? We got time for one more. Uh, yeah, this is just, you know, will we get an audio of this webinar? And yes, absolutely. We'll get, send you the recording and also the, the, the slides as well. So, and the Q and A as yeah, well. It, and all this will be on, on our YouTube page too. So you can just go, you can get that anytime. Oh, and, and also the copy of the letter that yes. Mike mentioned during the webinar. Yes. Yeah. We'll get that out to everybody too. Oh, by the way, if anybody's listening to this recorded and you want a copy of that letter, email Brandon. His email's on the slide right now. He'll get it to you. We're yep, not, it's definitely. not just for our clients. We want to help our, our mission is not just to help our clients. Our mission is to help trucking. So that's, that's people that aren't our clients too. We'll share it with you too. I think, I think that's about all the questions. Awesome. Well, great. If anybody has any follow-ups, get with Brandon. Uh, a lot of times these things take time to digest. Uh, I really encourage you again to communicate with your drivers about this a week or two before it happens. Give the government time to try and work out a compromise to make sure it's really going to happen and go from there. And hopefully we can all make the best of it and keep these trucks rolling and get through all the crazy that is uh, COVID-19. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you everybody for attending. 
Um, you know, we look forward to doing this again. If there's other webinar topics you'd like us to cover, reach out to Brandon and we'll try and do a webinar. We love it when people give us suggestions. So thanks for attending and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone.